morning and welcome to the Harry Martha Show. I'm Harry Martha, your host. Today we're going to work on some pine needle baskets and I'm going to run you through the basics of how to get started on one yourself. The first step is to collect some pine needles, which I've done already, and I've prepared them and put them in these little bundles like this. These were green, picked off of a tree. Don't take too many from one tree because it could damage the tree. You want to pick them and dry them. Make sure that they are, have no moisture in them when you put them into long-term storage. Conversely, you could pick up some off of the ground that have fallen off of a tree and we'll go look at those here in just a second. We're using needles from the Pinus palustris, which is the longleaf pine, and if you find one in the south somewhere, they don't really grow much north of Louisiana, at the base of the tree there's plenty of pine needles that you could pick up. You'd probably want to do this after a rain. Uh, what's nice about them is the color. They're more of a golden brown. and from my experience, if you pick green ones and dry them in the dark, they stay green unless you leave your basket in the sunlight. But if it's an indirect light, they'll stay green for a long time. So you could use these needles that fall naturally off the tree and needles that you've picked and dried and have contrasting colors or whatever you like. Personally, I like picking them off of a tree. So the very first thing you're going to have to do after collecting needles and possibly drying needles is to mellow the needles. Um, mellowing is a term in basketry that means adding moisture to your materials without actually soaking them. See if you soak your vines or pine needles or whatever it is you're weaving, they'll swell up with water and you'll weave and then they'll dry and shrink and your finished product will be loose. You don't want to do that. So mellowing means you take a rag with hot water or warm water and you put your materials in the rag and you just fold it over and you let the steam sort of just seep in there for a little while. It could be a few hours, it could be overnight, it doesn't really matter. You don't want a sopping wet rag, you just want a damp rag. So, I'm going to just take this rag over to the sink, which you probably can't really see. I'm putting some hot water on it. Now I'm going to wring it out as well as I can. And put my needles in here. I'm not going to mellow the whole bundle. I'm only going to mellow this many because the first step in a coiled basket will be to tie a knot it with these pine needles. And I only need actually, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about a dozen or so needles to do that with. By the way, each leaf has actually three needles on Pinus palustris. Anyway, I'm just going to put them in the rag, just like this, fold it over a couple times. I'm going to let it sit for a few hours and come back to it later. So several hours have passed and it's now time to check the pine needles that we have mellowing in this rag. And they look a lot more supple than they were this morning. So, the first step is to try to make them sort of flush on the end and then coax them into a bend. And when they start to be supple, you just sort of flip them over and tie yourself a little knot. Like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just a 
about like that. Then the next step is to take a piece of raffia. You can buy a bundle of raffia at Hobby Lobby for about $5. It used to be a lot less expensive. You can probably buy it online. And a large rug needle type thing. Blunt tip. You don't want anything that's going to poke you. Thread it. And we're going to go all the way around all of this. You want to completely cover every bit of it. Like so. And your tail, the tail of raffia, just hold it in there and sew over top of it. There's no wrong way to do this. There's no right way to do it. This is the very beginning of the basket. And basically we're just holding everything in place so that there's just a bundle of pine needles with a little donut hole in the middle. Another way to do this that I'm not going to demonstrate that my mother taught me to do is to take a large washer like you could get at Lowe's or a hardware store and uh, wrap the raffia all the way around the washer and uh, then start lashing your pine needles onto that that method works particularly well if you live in an area of the country that doesn't have long pine needles because uh, if you're up north farther than oh I don't know North Mississippi, North Louisiana you're not really gonna find any longleaf pines and you'll just have to use what you've got some are longer than others but some of these pine needles are 18 inches long. It's just it's truly amazing. See, just lash, flashing. And we're about half done. And uh, you can go left to right, right to left. You'll probably want to experiment and find out which works best for you. There is no right way to do it. There's only wrong ways. <laughs> Keep going around. Keep going around. get to this point, we can clip the tips off of these, the end caps off of the pine needles. Like so. And then just lash over that too. There you have it. It's going to look something like this when you're done. All these little ends sticking out. Don't worry about it because they're going to be hidden inside of our lashing. And there we have it. Now the next step, the needles that are sticking out, just start wrapping them. Maybe two wraps and then a stitch 
all the way down into the middle. And a couple more wraps. Down into the middle. And at this point, we can start adding new pine needles. Just pull this little tip off the end of the pine needle and slide it in to build the thickness of this up to the way you want it. So that's how you start. And I'm going to go back to the one I'm working on now and we can continue with that. So, we're going to just continue the process of wrapping the lashing. And I don't like the direction that this one is going. I prefer to work this way. It's just my personal taste. I don't know if you call it clockwise or counterclockwise. It depends on what you're talking about. Also, this is a little bit thin to work with. It'll take days and days to finish a basket like that. So we just want to take one of our pine needles. It's about a foot long, at least. I'm going to pull the end cap off. It and just stuff it in there. So there's three needles to stuff. Add one, let's add two, or three. And give it another wrap. Add another one. Notice that these pine needles haven't been mellowed, they're just dry. It's okay because we're not going to force them to do any tight bends. And just wrap. Stuff and wrap. At this point we're going to have to be a little bit more careful with our stitches just because we want the basket to actually be visually appealing when it's done. That first part when you're just trying to get the circle together, eh, it's not so important. But once you get to be about this size, it's, it's just time to start neatening it up. You need to decide on how wide you want to space your stitches. Uh, the most sturdy baskets, like this one, in the center, it's wrap, stitch, wrap, stitch. And when I say stitch, let's see, let's see if I can show you. I'm going, I'm wrapping, and then I stitch. And since we're this close... So at the beginning of this basket, we stitch right down through the center donut hole. However, in a few minutes, we're going to start stitching somewhere mid-coil. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in about a second. Okay, here we go. Let's add a couple new pine needles. Okay. We're going to wrap. One. Two. Now, the raffia has different thicknesses, so 
doesn't really matter how many wraps, it's actually the distance. And I'm thinking about half inch, so that's three wraps, and then I'm going to stitch mid-coil. See, I'm not going down through the hole anymore, I'm going right through the center of my last coil. I said you can hold this however you want you can turn it you can turn it around until you find which direction you work best in two this looks like about the same distance half inch or so is the last one hold the coil where we want it and we're gonna stitch right about there And in this way, a pattern starts to develop. Like I said, I don't like to work on thin, thin coils, so I'm going to continually be adding pine needles until this is a nice thickness. right here we're in a larger portion of the raffia where it's wider so we really only need to do two wraps that time and if we basically continue this until we run out of raffia and then I'll show you how to tie on a new piece here in a minute Uh, I like it when some of the pine needles are exposed. They don't have to be completely covered. So in this basket, we're going to do, leave some open, unwrapped spaces. All right. The trick is just to do it. I'm going to stick this through like this. Push the needle just through my old stitching. However it comes out. Needle nose pliers. Pull it. Cut. New piece of raffia. Sometimes it's easier to cut the end off. straight through like this because anything on that outer edge of the coil at this point is going to be covered by the next row that we lash on. Needle nose pliers sometimes help, sometimes not. Let's leave a tail, it's fine. I'm going to push this old piece down, right where I want it, out of the way, tucked down in, and no one can see it, and then hold it, start wrapping. Make sure our distance is about the same, and do another lash. There's nothing to it, like I said before. There's no right way to do it, only wrong ways.
add more pine needles. If you do this all day, you'll end up with a little bit of pine pitch on your teeth. Who cares? Let's continue to sew and wrap. see that the pattern is starting to develop. Sort of looks like spokes of a wheel. And if you don't like the way it looks, do it differently. You can use color graphia. You could use pieces from a Spanish bayonet plant that you dry first. Or a yucca. In fact, some yuccas have that little sharp tip and you could probably use that as the needle itself. You want it to be all Neanderthal. So as you can see, I'm decreasing the diameter of the coil simply by not adding any new pine needles. And I'm just continuing to wrap and stitch down and every time it just gets a little bit smaller until we will we'll be sewing just one pine needle down basically. So around and around we go. It's not important, but if you try to keep your lashing material sort of straight and keep it from twisting on itself, it does cover more surface area if that's what you're after. And the easiest way to do that actually is to hold it straight and turn the basket. But uh, like I said before, whatever works for you is the way to do it. There's no right way, there's only wrong ways. Let's keep going around and around. <laughs> 